All right, all right, all right. Welcome to another episode of the Bring the Juice podcast. I'm your host, Frank Delano. Today on the pod, we have Atlanta Braves World Series champ, a reoccurring guest now, Dylan Lee. Say what's up to the boys real quick. It's nice to be back. Uh, second time, right? First we gonna rock, then we gonna fall, then we let it pop, don't let it go. Yeah. Maybe top, top two and not two. More. It's becoming like an annual thing, actually. I think we are almost a year apart. Yeah. Damn near. Pretty close. Wow. Uh, before we start, as always, this episode of Bring the Juice is brought to you in part by the American Pistachio Growers. If you want to perform like the pros, eat your pistachios. Eat those nuts, kids. I mean, Dylan, we were just absolutely munching, mowing down pistachios from the American Pistachio Growers. I personally like that scorpion flavor that they had going. Uh, I know they have the Pat Pistachio out now. I like the OG Shell. What would you say is your favorite flavor of pistachios? Uh, I think there was one with a little chili on it. Uh -huh. I don't know. It's not like too hot, but it's got good flavor. Do you think there's a correlation from winning the World Series and eating pistachios? Do you 100%. think that helped? Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I would imagine so. Yeah. Uh, you know, before we get into things, first of all, congratulations. Since, since you last been on the pod, you've been married. You had the World Series parade. Um, a lot going on, but year two is different than year one from you coming on the pod. I just kind of want to start with, let's talk about the process of the MLB draft real quick. Let's just dive into it. Guys get drafted all the time. Sometimes there's a lot of rounds. Sometimes you don't go. Sometimes you do go. What's the determining factor to whether you say, hey, I was drafted in the second round. I'm going to go pursue that career. Or, hey, I was drafted in the 22nd round. I might stay in college another year and try to get drafted a little higher. What's, what's the thought process? Is there a rule of thumb people go off of? Well, I think they just shortened the draft. I don't know if it's still shortened, but it is. Since short, COVID, right? Yeah, it yeah. is a shorter draft. Um, I think it just has to be with what you grew up around, if you're able to do it. Uh, I was a senior sign. Right. Uh, there's a lot of people that go out of high school. There's guys at JUCO. I mean, I think if you're ready for it, you're ready for it. Uh, right. I, I go back and I tell kids all the time, like, I wasn't ready coming from high school. and I don't even think even junior college. Uh, I needed the four years. Yeah, I, I think I developed more as my self maturity. Like I knew what I wanted to do in life. I knew how to work out. I knew what it took to achieve a goal that I had for a long time, which was becoming a professional athlete. <clears throat> so when you were initially drafted, you you didn't go straight to the pros. I think most the human population who follows sports they think, oh. Dylan Lee's drafted to the to the Florida Miami Marlins. He's now on the Marlins. That's that's not necessarily the case. Can you give us the elevator pitch version of what it's like to go from hey I just got drafted to the Miami Mar Miami Marlins? What's ha what happens next? So the way it happened for me is I got a phone call from the scout that drafted me. Um, he's in the room or he's in the talk with the people. You get a phone call and they give you a draft date. Like oh you're gonna report just almost like the military. It's very similar to military, um, very, very military mindset, the way they kind of do things. You get drafted, first of all, that's just like military. Right. You get sent to a certain place, which you report, they do a physical, uh, you go to, they send you on an assignment, you go to your assignment. I went to the GCL first, which is the Gulf Coast League. Then you went to Batavia, New York, which is the New York Penn League. Mm-hmm. I went to the Sally League, which was the Southern Atlantic League. Something. Yeah. And I was with Greensboro Grasshoppers. Went to High A, which is Jupiter Hammerheads. Double A at the time was the Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimp. They were the Jacksonville Sun. Now they're Jumbo Shrimp. It's that's somebody. Good, hey. it's, it's a good name. It's catchy. That's a great name. Yeah. Some of these some of these like farm ball teams are like they got some badass wait for names. The, wait for the New Orleans Baby Cakes. That's the. That's right. You told me that one last time. It was the New Orleans Baby Cakes, and that was AAA. And they're no longer a team, so I'm oh. glad that I got to play with them because they had like a sick, like it's like a baby face. Like, wow. have you ever went to a Pelicans game or seen a Pelicans game? They my, really have like an adult baby. My it's uncle like, was the manager for the Pelicans for a period of time. Really? In Myrtle Beach, right? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, Baby Blue. Uh, no, it's like the New Orleans Pelicans, like the. Pelicans. Myrtle Beach is the minor league team, oh, I think. Oh, okay. I'm talking, yes, about, I'm talking about the minor league team. Yeah. No, I'm talking about the like the Pelicans, the basketball, basketball team. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, if you watch their game, they like have a giant baby. 
Really? And it's supposed to be a king cake, I think it's called. And there's a little baby Jesus that's supposed to be like, that's there. And that's how we got the baby cakes. You learn something new on bringing juice every day. Yeah. So but if you can tell, it's a long journey. It's yeah. not some like straight process, which I think they shortened it now. It doesn't have as many depths to it. There's, so there's a lot less teams that that are gone. I think what people don't really understand, and I I try to like use this bring the juice as a platform for, is like this is your career path. Imagine getting hired, promoted, demoted, fired, hired. I mean, that's, that doesn't happen usually unless you're going from McDonald's to Taco Bell to Carl's Jr. Like, that's not really how it goes, really. Yeah, and if you do get hired, it's like you're staying in this one position. Right. Like, you're not going to, like, manager. You're not going to the next spot. Uh, you got to work really hard. And I think, and you could attest to this, too, but the older you get, I don't want to say your value decreases, but let's say, I'm just throwing this out as an example. Let's say you're a lefty who throws 90 and you have all these pitchers. And there's a guy who's 23 and you're 28. They're going to take the 23 year old because they could develop him longer. Yeah, he's got more juice left in his arm. Yeah, Am I right. N- yes and no. Because I mean, he has more experience. You have more experience. Is that is that how it goes or what? For me, I've learned that it's not only about what you bring statistically wise or what you bring as a like a athlete. Let's just say. Right. You got to deal with these guys for 162 days. Yeah. And it's a, almost like a family, like football or any other sport that you have. But we're not just playing every Sunday or playing every Monday night. It's every day. It's literally every day. And you got to have, you got to be a good person at the end of the day. You can't just be like, no, no, no. I'm the dude. Yeah, like, yeah. You got to be like, it's high character. Not, never too high, never too low. You got to be the same guy every single day. I like how you describe that. I haven't had anybody say that yet. What? I mean, I just think like you're right because you could be low-key an asshole in the nfl and still be one of the best in the nfl like look i'm gonna use i i don't i, I don't know anybody personally but let's use antonio brown as an example granted he's on <laughs> freaking mars right now with what he's doing but the dude i saw someone tweet about it is he a pro bowl i mean a hall of famer he's like a i don't again don't quote me off these but he's a like seven time pro bowler he's gotten all these records he's all decade team blah 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 like he definitely had an era at one point but is he a dude i mean i'm not a coach either i would not want an antonio brown in my locker room i think he's a cancer to the team but at the same time the dude's making plays i feel like in baseball if you have someone that's making that much outside noise like that it would become a problem at some point yeah but i mean you probably know this as well like all the outside noise doesn't mean that no, the, in the inside in the locker room and how he deals with somebody day to day, like when we had some stuff happen with our team, whatever the outside noise was, it's just outside noise. Yeah. And you come in, you treat everybody the same and you treat them like a human. And until they disrespect me personally, like I'm not going to look at them any differently. Yeah. I just got to take them for face value and <clears throat> take it day to day. Cause it, you never know. Like I saw a thing where Drew Brees came back with the Saints and you got everybody hugging on him and saying like they missed him. So. It, you never know. Like just because something gets taken out of context, it doesn't mean that that's actually what's going on. I used Antonio Brown because I think he's 100 percent out of pocket for sure. <laughs> I mean, he's yeah, he's, but I, he's going butt naked at Marriott. You never, Marriott's you, never like you never know like the CTE stuff. You don't know. Like, hey, I 100 percent agree with that, man. I, he hasn't got his brain scanned. I'm not saying that you can. I think you have to. Something happens. there's a lot going on with him for sure. I agree. Something's wrong. I, I feel bad. I really do. Yeah, especially being a wide receiver, it's like, dude, you kind of, you see how other dudes are, um, some good, some strong, some not as much. He definitely makes noise, and I, it's known being a wide receiver, like I was always trying to be a humble guy, you know, be quiet, work softly, and carry a big stick. Terry mm-hmm. Roosevelt said that. Yep. My dad said that. I think that's a good thing. Most wide receivers tend to be showboaty kind of cocky like i mean it's terrell you, owens you chad Josico. you need to be it's like your brand like confidence is key at the end of the day and yep. like if you could back it up even shit, who's, better who's gonna say anything even better who's gonna say anything that's what make like Deion sanders the dude was a little bit of a loud talker but no one is gonna mess with prime time no no one's gonna mess with prime time there's people that even try to take that nickname because it's just like a good nickname too. Like it's prime time. Nickname. You get on the field and it's just go time. You cannot say who's prime time and the answer isn't Deion Sanders. And that I think that's honestly in baseball and football. Yeah. He did enough. 
I mean, you can say the same of Bo Jackson. Like, <laughs> I love Bo Jackson. Those are both dogs. And I don't think, I mean, you know this, like, it takes so much to play one sport. Michael at Jordan the, tried at, it. At the college level. Jordan tried it. My uncle, when he was playing minors, he played against Jordan. Actually, I have this. I got it. Jake, I got to send this picture. We're going to clip this right now. I have a picture with my uncle at his 50th birthday party. He has a picture in his room. He's always had it in his house with him. He's like 6'4". And Michael Jordan. And he looks small as hell. Yes. And at his 50th birthday party, I bartended it. And there was no decorations besides that picture. <laughs> that picture, and there was a cutout of Michael Jordan's face, and you could stand in it. And there was a step stool in the background. Legendary, absolutely legendary. <laughs> but yeah, MJ tried to play both. I mean, he didn't do as hot as he thought he would. Like, it's a game of failure, and I don't know if he's used to that. Like, failure is, <clears throat> it's tough. Derek Mentally. Jeter. I saw. I saw a quote from Derek Jeter. I, I'm not a TikToker, but. Uh, it came across sure? my feed. You sure? Sometimes you're on the toilet a long time, man, and you just you be scrolling like crazy. And Derek Jeter said something saying, "With what's your best advice for young baseball players trying to be successful?" And I, I the one sentence I could for sure quote was, "Get used to failing," because if you bat 350 in your career, you're a Hall, Hall of Famer. Famer. Easy. And he goes, "That equates to." Three out of ten times, essentially, you're successful. Well, that's more than three out of ten because three fifty. Right, right, right. But he goes, "That's that's crazy. Like that's in, in three fifty at a whole like three fifty career batting average is insane." Yeah. So you got to get used to dealing with failure in order to be successful, and I think it, I mean in t- today's the generations they're only getting softer. Mm. Kid, 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 kids are Charmin Ultra. <laughs> Extra soft Costco edition, 24 pack, soft as dog shit. And as kids continue to get softer, it's going to make sports softer. I just think that the competitiveness could still be there. If they are getting softer, I just feel like the competitiveness and the sport doesn't decrease because of that. Like I, I want, I want it to keep going up. I do too. I want the, I remember when my brother was playing, you could see, the competitiveness from even Little League. Like, I was scared. I was like, I don't want to step in the box. Bro, I, w- I went through that era too. Like, I do not want to step in the box because they're going to buzz some towers. There's, like, people that are going to hit you and just be like, what? Like, I'll never I'm going to hit you and you're going to go on first and then I'm going to strike the next guys out and I still hit you. Yeah. No run scored. I mean, I, I talk about it. So, my youngest brother, shout out to Joe, he's playing in Valley Championships D1. Uh, this episode will already have passed at this point, but hopefully he won. <laughs> but but he's but Cheers like I, I've watched I've watched him play high school football. I watched my brother Mac, who's fucking hooping right now for the dogs. Shout out to number zero. He I watched him play high school ball, and as I've done it, my parents have now watched twelve years of high school football. The same high school, Dylan. You're from the valley, big Dinuba guy. I think the competition's gone down. I just yeah. do. I no, think no, at no. one point when I played high school football, there were dudes who looked like grown men. Yeah. They were tatted up. They were freaking Beef, fuck. Just, just you're just like, dude. I don't. I didn't quite look left. I haven't right. hit that grown man weight yet. <laughs> but you already did, and you're a sophomore in high school. Like, it's part of the deal. And now you go to these games, and you're like, dude, that dude's got an offer from this well, place. I think it's also the, just the the noise. Like when I would see some of the high school games. My brother won a Valley Championship. Oh. Sorry about it. <laughs> but I didn't I wasn't on the team, but he he was. And he literally like smashed somebody's face mask in. I don't know if that's normal because it's not. Uh, I got but, my jaw broken in high school. Yeah, but. but the face mask was literally pressed in because he hit the guy so hard. And I don't think that people are hitting which I understand. Like that's not okay to be putting someone in the hospital. But no, no, no. Targeting the targeting rules yeah. have changed as time has gone on. I think it's more the fact that it's getting softer, even with the penalties. Like you would only penalties. see stuff just if it was blatant, and like face mask if it was blatant. Like if it was just right. like a slip and they had sticky gloves and you see like something. The, yeah, it's different. Now it's like if the finger like if you, if you get a it. pinky ticked in the top of the head, face mask gone. Yeah, I agree, and I think also parents. Are getting softer too. They're realizing, hey, why would my want put my kid through that? 
I, I mean, I understand. I, I know that there is people that do flag football and then just wait until their minds are fully developed and they can actually. I didn't start playing football in eighth grade. That's my what I'm my to parents, say. They, my dad said, "Hey, you either going to get burnt out and not like it by the time you're a senior in high school, or." That was really his big case, actually. My dad wanted me to play football. But but also, I'm the oldest. Yeah. So as soon as my football. dad got to cheer on one guy to play football, you my youngest <laughs> brother was in second grade. And like he's like oh, nine man, with like a broke. I have a picture. It's actually his profile picture on my phone when he calls me. He's like eight years old. He's a quarterback. And he has a broken arm. And he's just mean mugging the <laughs> shit out of the camera. And it's like, dude, who are you? Yeah. My senior year, I broke my middle finger and my ring finger. So I think it might help with my changeup, but you never know. Things like that can happen. Point is not playing, to get too off topic. Football. Right. Oh, gritty. Yeah. That's another thing. Kid I, you. I had like just a straight mud. mud yeah. Danuba didn't have trainers. They were just freaking going. <laughs> Throw some dirt in Throw it, some baby. Dirt on it, put some ice on it. You'll figure it out. Right? Yeah. Well, hey, there's this thing called icy hot. Try it out. Yeah. Put some heat, put some ice, you'll be all right. I think that's another thing too. Like I have a lot of kids that have reached out to me through Bring the Juice about my journey, people like you's journey, other people's journey that have come on this podcast, and they, they're they hungry to be successful. One thing that I've preached, and I don't know if I'm preaching the right way or not, but I have coaches that have appreciated, dude, play sports in high school. Don't oh. don't be 10 years old and say, oh, I'm, I'm going for baseball. You're going to find one sport that you like, either you like more or that you're just naturally better at. Yeah. Uh, you, you're not going to know if you're naturally better at it unless you try it. You As don't a young know. kid, I was playing soccer, football, basketball, baseball, wrestling, swimming. Yeah, same. And I loved swimming. Like, Dude. It started going into my baseball. Yeah. And I knew that I was naturally gifted with baseball. So I said, what's worth it? Like, to me, I, maybe I could have been a good swimmer. Maybe. But... You can swim on the I weekends. Made the right choice. Swim on the weekends. I think I made the right choice with baseball. I think you. I think you did a great. Yeah. You made a great call on that one. I, I. I. Again, I'm not telling you to. You know, if you're a parent listening to this, I'm not telling you to do this, do yeah. that. But I think it's. It makes you more of a rounded <clears throat> athlete. And for me, my parents didn't let me quit. Me either. They're saying if you do this, yeah, if you like start this team, you're committed to this team. You're going to finish this out. Your teammates are relying. At the on end you. of the year, you got to just say, well, did I like it or didn't? I agree. Not for me. I actually had a buddy. I hope he's not listening to this. He's going he's gonna to feel like an asshole right now. But uh, I really hope he's not listening to this right now. But he, we were friends through kindergarten through eighth grade. He was going to go to a different high school than me. He quit all the sports growing up eventually. And volleyball was his thing. Men's volleyball. We're in eighth grade. He's about to go to this high school. I'm going to this high school. It's it's like four months left till graduation and my mom says, you know, it'd be really nice if you played volleyball so you could spend the last few months competing with your friend. <sighs> and I'm like, you know what, mom? All right. I'm playing baseball too and running track. I'm in eighth grade. It's not that big of a deal. You're like, yeah, I just have some. I just show up to the track meets. I could, I, well, I it, wor- it worked out. Yeah. It worked out. Small school. But they, so they gave out. Again, this is when the world started getting soft. They gave out a medal at the end of each game. Participation trophy? To the best sportsmanship award. You had to win that one. Uh, but pretty much the award <laughs> the award translated to who's the best player on our team that wasn't an a-hole. And I, I won like three in a row. My buddy, who volleyballs his thing, didn't. Well, he quits the team. Five other kids quit the team. Next thing you know, I don't want to play volleyball, and the but there's only five other players I have to play. And my mom's like, you have to freaking play volleyball right now. Yeah. And I'm just thinking to myself like, mom, I hate volleyball. These kids suck. Like you might have played we're against losing. Friend, so I maybe the club is West. But I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know, man. Like it's, it's just, it's just part of the, it's just part of the deal. Dude, I, there's some men volleyball <laughs> players that get after it. Dude, men's volleyball nasty. is legit. Yeah. I will say this though. And I've mentioned this on the podcast before. So, I again, I played football. You played baseball. I know that. You guys play 162 games a year. Football in college. How much do you play in high school? In, in college, 30, 40, 40 I think games. We play every Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then Tuesday. So three times. Call it uh, 20 weeks. Yeah, it's maybe 50 games. 50, 60, 60 games. games yeah. Okay, so here's my take on kids on kids developing to wanting to play college sports. If you play, let's say you play high school football 
and your team's good. So you're guaranteed 10 games. Let's say you make two games of the playoffs. That's 12 games, okay? So you got 12. Let's say you play basketball or bas- or or soccer, okay? Usually one of them plays Monday, Friday. One of them plays like Tuesday, Thursday, something like that. Let's say that's another, what, 25 games, 22 games. Let's give it 22 games, okay? Jake, I'm going to need you to do some math here in a sec. 12 plus 22. And let's say you get 35 games. So let's say you get 30 games. 22. Ga- Sorry. 30, 30 games of high school baseball? Yeah. Uh no, there's more than that in high school baseball. Let's call it let's call I it through like fifty six or sixty something innings. So I know that there's more than that. And I didn't throw every game. Let's school. call it forty games. Okay. Forty games of high school baseball. And then let's say you run track. And there's let's say you run it maybe not in all the meets, maybe you're not that good, but let's say you go to uh five track meets and you compete in two events per track meet. So that's, that's, let's call that 10. Let's call that 10, 10 op- opportunities. 12 plus 22 plus 40 plus 10. What do we got? Anybody in the audience? 62. All right. That is it's ballparking 62 competitive <clears throat> matches that you're going to be in. What I'm getting at is this, whether, whether you played the 12 only played football and you played 12 opportunities to compete Real game opportunities to compete. 22 opportunities in basketball or ba- or soccer. 40 opportunities in baseball. 10 opportunities in track. Those are all single-handed. Like, if you focus on one, that's that's how many chances you get to compete. Versus if you play that, all those, you get 62 chances to compete against the best people in your region, the top of their game. And ultimately, Dylan, I know that you know this at this point because you've won a World Series sports are a lot of things. There's talent. There's grit. There's mindset. There's savvy. You got to be something that separates you from the pack. But at the end of the day, there isn't one person that's came on bring the juice so far between the guys in the NFL, the guys in the major league baseball, like yourself, NBA, the Olympians, the fighters. That is not a competitor. Every single one of you, the one trait you all have in common, whether you're freaking five foot, hundred pounds or seven foot, 400 pounds, Every dude on here is a competitor because if you're at the top of your game, bro, you want to win more than anything in the world. You have this thing in you that itches that you're just like, dude, I will, I will, I'm willing to run through a wall, die, kill, throw my arm off, punch someone in the face to win. Yeah. And some people listen to this podcast really get that shit. And others are like, uh, others are like. This guy's, fu- this guy's fucking got to lay off the <laughs> Pacific Flyway whiskey. Bro. No, no. Once you get in between those lines, you turn into a different person. I just talked about that today. I went over to the Lindsay Sports Complex. Nice. And I told those kids, I said, man, I once you get in between those lines, you can greet, say whatever to your people before yeah. the game starts. Like Even if you go in between the lines before the game starts, you're talking to those people. The game starts, they say play ball, you got to turn into a different person. I had a great episode with NBA vet Quincy Pawnexter. Lives in Fresno. Wants to be the mayor of Fresno. Had a great 10-year NBA career. Stud. Gives back to the community. Had him on in the early days of Bring the Juice. Hasn't even seen the new studio yet. And one thing that we talked about was this thing called, that I've kind of, I've brought back hit or miss, called The Dark Place. <laughs> Where... And he talked about it because he got emotional on the pod at the end. At this point, Kobe died three months ago when he came on the podcast. And he has a giant portrait, freaking 25 feet tall, in his backyard down. Oh, Kobe. Uh, there's there's like Nipsey Hussle. There's Kobe. I forget the other two. Like a mur- it's a, a mural. mural of the people that kind of lost their lives recently. Lost their, li- no, not lost their lives recently. People that have impacted his life. But two of them happened also around the same time similar yeah and he talked about the kobe mindset and i'm not gonna get too far into that but there's a book i'll i'll give it to you what's it called it's like legacy or something it's a black book with red lettering have you read uh shit oh i'm pissed we'll we'll think about it later yeah i got i got i read books i read books i read books i listen to books i'm on the road a lot you know yeah but basically Kobe, between Kobe and Quincy Pondexter and my life and talking to people and bringing the juice here, you know, it's been 50 episodes since we've talked. I've, I've grown as a podcaster to where I think about this dark place where, again, some people get it, some people don't, where it's like, I mean, 
like like Dylan, like this is one of the questions I have bullet pointed for you. When it's time, you're a pitcher who goes in, you're not going in to pitch 10 innings. You're going to throw some gas, give him some cheddar, give him some of that stank, get the job done and get out. Yeah. You are be ready for tomorrow. That's what you right, right, remember. Because right. it's not like football where you just blow your load and you gotta literally like <laughs> sit on it. You gotta you gotta go. No, you gotta be it's, able to get something almost two or three days in a row, possibly warm up the next day or sit the next day and get ready to go the next like, It's a it is definitely like a next play mentality. But Dylan, I mean you're so like tunnel vision focused, I feel like, to where how do you being a relief pitcher, a closer essentially, correct? Uh not, mid range. I would say you not a starter. Fireman. Sure. Fireman. They call, they call it a fireman. You're a fireman. Knowing, but you're a guy who's in the bullpen before the game starts, right? Of course. I mean, I'm out there with the national anthem. Right. But as soon as the phone starts ringing, what is that moment where you're like, hey, I need to lock the fuck in right now? I mean, you already see things develop. Right. I've gotten to a point where you can kind of see, know when your role is coming up. Like, we got to get going. You got to stretch. You got to know what, like the fireman role is coming. There's a fire. You got to put it out. That's fucking badass. I love that shit. Do you have a fireman's helmet by chance? <laughs> no. I just, I saw something in Seattle and I've heard the term before, like when stuff's going bad or there's guys on base, you just go to clean it up maybe for an inning or an inning and a half, two innings. Yeah. Just to kind of bridge it, bridge the gap to the relief guys, the guys, the flamethrowers, the closers that just get stuff done. So you're, what would you say? You're sixth, seventh, eighth, mainly? I'm, I've been in the game... Third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh inning. It well, matter. I know we've talked about last year on the pod. You, you had your first start. Yeah. Which was fucking crazy. I haven't had a start since. So I think they figured out my role. <laughs> 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 but I mean, do you going? For, okay, let's just talk about the transition from, okay, game starts. Yep. Pitcher who's starting for the Atlanta Braves does his thing. Okay. Let's say it's it's either going super well or we're getting later in the game and he's kind of starting to trickle down, trickle down a little he's bit. He's going to walk in some people, throw in some balls. And throw in some balls, get some hits. Momentum is shifting, whatever you want to call it. You you have you obviously have a coach who is saying, hey, Open coach. get hot. Yeah, there's guys that I'm, I'm usually asking because I'm not afraid to ask questions yeah. anymore. Like, hey, who's, is it who's time? the first guy out? Yeah. Like, that's usually the question. It's like, who's the first guy? And he's like, could be you, could be somebody else. And instantly, like, just, you start, per- like... Sweating? Oh, yeah. Really? My heart starts going, like, let's let's get it. What is... So, tell me about that adrenaline. Like, so, so all right, so you're... Like, there's adrenaline. But you're cool as a cucumber when the game starts, because yeah. you know you're not starting. But I also have, like, a hoodie on, and I got a jacket, because I want to stay ready. Like... Yeah. You don't have to get ready to st- if you're ready already, you know? I think there's a saying. Yeah, you don't have to get ready. Stay ready, ready, so you don't got to get ready. Yeah. Something like that. But some ancient prophet said this or shit like yeah. that. Some guy that probably knows what he's talking about. <laughs> so all right, so you're hot, you're ready to roll. And then as the pitch we'll as stretch a, out a little bit, make sure that like we'll get our arms rolling, right? We'll do a little bit of like movement stuff. Yeah. But essentially we don't get on the mound until they say get hot. And we, then we get hot. Pull. Sometimes is there is there just is it strictly you? Is there two guys There's and two they guys. pick one? Yeah. And they pick one. Yep. What happens when you don't get picked? You're like, all right, I'm going to cool down for a sec. Yeah, but it's, you still got to stay ready. How hot are those fumes? It's You get put away hot, It's it sucks. Because when I showed you my Bring the Juice sweatshirt, which is now... Uh, get your piss hot, you say. I say, get your piss hot. Yeah. Is your piss fucking hot at well, that point? usually a lot of the guys in the bullpen know. If he calls my name, I'm usually... Your name specifically, not every guy's name, but they know, if hey, the when, phone rings when Dylan Lee gets me, called, I'm probably, shit's hitting the fan. Well, usually it's piss hitting the toilet because I'm like using the restroom and then I go out there and throw. Ready to roll. Yep. There's an old saying. I don't know the, if it's like horse. Boys are bopping. You want to put a bet on somebody that the horse is either using the restroom one or two. You put bets on that horse because he's feeling better. I'm, I don't know if you're a betting man. I'm not, but I just, I've heard it. I'm a betting man. <laughs> I haven't heard of that, but maybe that'll help you win some more bets. Maybe I'm trying to go. To, I'm, I'm trying to go to Kentucky Derby. Well, I have some guys, so <whistles> connections. God damn! Hey, hey, let's simmer back down. Hey, I, walk I, in, hey, hey, 
All right, let's get back on track. Before we roll, though, I want to shout out a few more sponsors. Uh, obviously, we shout out our pistachios. Um, I know you're not a business owner yet in Fresno. Someday you will be. Maybe. But Fresno First Bank is one of the most exclusive sponsors of Bring the Juice Down. Uh, at Fresno First, you're a local bank to the... They, they are the local banks of Fresno in the community. Strong connection with business owners, help them grow and succeed. When you walk in there, they give you a knuckles, a high five, a shake your hand, a good old, how you doing, brother? How you doing, sir? Go dogs. Uh, hey, did you listen to the last episode of Bring the Juice with uh, featuring World Series champ Dylan Lee? Oh, yeah, I did. I love what I heard about his foundation, Leaders and Lures. I want to donate to it. Foreshadowing. But uh, long story short, if you're looking for a definitive banking experience where they're going to treat you like family and take a sound business approach to what you need in business, then Fresno First is where you want to be. And I'm sure you've heard, because I know you listen to Bring the Juice regularly to get your mind right, Dervos Deli is our other sponsor. Really? Uh, so in our era at Fresno State, I know you're a little older than me. It was like me. Deli Delicious. It was, was Deli it? Delicious. Same owner. Oh, really? Same owner. Is a different name? He pretty much said like, hey, because Deli Delicious is a franchise. He was like, hey. I can do my own thing. I'm cool. Uh, he's a third generation bulldog and said, hey, I, I want to make a place where dogs want to come. He's about to get his liquor license. I told him. One dollar beers, on like Thursday nights or something. Every like, day, wow. I think it would kill it. I think it would kill it. He's got to just make sure that the don't lose money. Yeah, just do bare minimal because you know that that's what it's going to bring him, and then have good food. Get so food. at this point, again, I'm double foreshadowing. Um, I had a live podcast with a few guys from Fresno State a few weeks ago. Evan Williams, Zane Pope. They just went off. Did you see that insane victory against San Diego State? The onside kick? Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Anyways, they Whatever. went off. Whatever. Dogs on top. But they uh, they were on the pod live. We taste tested a bunch of things. Honestly, next time you're in town, we'll go there and do a live pod because I feel like it would be absolutely electric. Jake, my video man over here is like, fuck yeah, let's do it. Um, <laughs> but... One dollar beers during Bring the Juice podcast. That'll sell. I think people would. I think. If, I, don't, I, don't I think, think there'd be two hundred people in there. Yeah, but I think we got to limit. We got to do like when I was in Oklahoma, they had a two ticket tab, and you bring your two beers in, and then you bring your two tabs, like two beers in, and you swap them out. Like that's the way you can kind of figure out. Like this guy. Hey, this guy. This guy's good. Even, he can't even make it to the <laughs> table. Okay, <laughs> you got to bring your two. Uh, yeah, that's when I was in Oklahoma at a place called Cowboys. That's kind of how they did it. You kind of came in with two tabs, brought yeah. them in, and you just swapped it out. I mean, I'm 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 game for all of it, but Dervo's Deli, dude, they got this chicken sandwich that absolutely hits. They the waffle fries hit. Oh, I remember Deli Delicious when he owned it. He would give to well, the student well, athletes. So the student athletes, we used sandwich. to get a free sandwich yes. once a month. Yep. And right, I think it was like every two weeks or. It might have been if you it just. Might've, it it might have been, been. It might have been. Day. You just give the little head nod. Hey, yo, I need it. I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you know what? On the real, uh, Justin, the owner, great dude. Again, former dog. He's trying to get like a wall of fame of pictures of Valley dudes, so former he needs a dogs. Jersey, you're saying? No, uh, bring the juice. He's a jersey. <laughs> bring the juice. It's honestly, Dylan. It's disrespect. I don't have a Dylan Lee jersey up here. Well, not a lot of people do. Like my brother doesn't even have a jersey, so. Uh, that's a, that sounds like <laughs> hey that sounds like a personal problem. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, I know what your brother does have a Coors Light and some Pacific Flyway whiskey yes. in his hand, so he can't get plenty. And I guarantee you, he's going to come away with the exclusive bring, bring the juice hat. I like this one right here. That's nice. You could have Color it right wave. now. You could have it right now. Color wave's nice. Have it right now. Looks great. We got we got we got look at that. Oh yeah, and it's like a glove. You know what, Dylan? I want to transition real quick. We're going to get back into the World Series stuff. We're going to get back into all that. But you just took your leaders and lords hat off. And you put a bring the juice hat on, which is very good looking, by the way. Leaders and lords. Last year, we did a podcast. You just won the World Series. You were very green to the whole idea. It was very new. Talk to me. Give me the, hey, we just got an elevator. We're on floor one. We're going up to floor 187 because we got the penthouse. What is leaders and lords? Why and what? So basically, I'm just trying to help the community any way I can. Any way I can. Any way I can. Uh, there's been Dinuba sports teams that need equipment or they just need some help, like with a certain project that they're doing for the high school. Uh, I actually funded the softball team's helmets. I did the baseball golf tournament. 
and I just recently got in touch with the golf tournament. Not a golf tournament. It was a golf team that needed some bags for some kids. Sure. Golf bags like maybe a hundred and. 90 bucks. Hey, no value. We don't got to talk no, values. I, no, but it's more the fact that he's like, oh, I need just six bags for some kids. I said, six? I can do that. Like, sure. I can take care of some kids. Reasonable. Maybe like keep it in the community, in, no, in no, the just, school. Yeah, like keep it in the school that these six bags for kids. Rent it can, out, bring yeah, them to the next guy. Rent it. Just like you can have it if you're with the team and then you bring it back and like keep it nice. and Right. Yeah. Accountability. It's, yes. Uh, I just wanted to help, help kids. I'm in a position where I can help people. I uh, don't really get a lot of funding. So a lot of people are like, oh, he's getting grants. He's getting this. He's getting that. I'm mainly funding this with... You're just, self-funded. Yeah. Which, I, again, I don't know if people know that. Same thing. Dude, I'm completely self-funded. I don't want to talk about... Me. I want to talk about me in a sec. But before I want to talk about you... you dude, you, you front up this money. You front up your time. I mean, I've said this with a few guys. Jalen Johnson, he plays for the Chicago Bears. He didn't go to Fresno State. He went to Central High School. He went to the University of Utah. And he now is the starting cornerback for the Chicago Bears. I saw him play this weekend against one of my best friends, Michael Walker, who won the game, but whatever. But but what I'm getting at is like there are dudes that are from the Valley. And I this is one of my favorite parts about Bring the Juice. I'm not ABC 30 Action News. I'm not KC24 uh, exclusive story. I'm not, I don't even know what the, the other ones are. I don't give a shit though. I'm not those. I can say whatever I want on this podcast. I can do whatever I want. And I know the people of Fresno, the people of the Valley. They appreciate it. They want real. They want real. They want to hear what's really going on. So when they hear Dylan Lee, a guy who grew up in the Valley, a guy who went to Dinuba High School, who went Juco within the Valley, COS. Shout out COS. Shout out COS. Big old Sequoias. What's up? Sheesh. Then goes to Fresno State after all that. That's three levels. That's three tiers of Valley product. Or by the way, a lot of pistachios are growing in the Valley. More trees than people, that's for sure. I, I'm 100%. I don't know if that's a stat, but we'll check out with a pistachio grower guy. Um, I see a nod out of the car. <laughs> but what I'm getting at is like, dude, you, you've stuck around. You get drafted in not like the first round. Well, I was a money saver, if that makes sense. I get that. But, bro, you also started, like, bro, you started one of the games in which the Braves won the World Series. Like, don't, and like, Dylan, like, I tell I don't people, like to downplay this. I, I tell, I, I know you do, because you're a humble dude, and I appreciate that. We're drinking Coors Light. We're, 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 the American, we're for the American people. My point is, my point is, you, You've stayed, you've stayed humble, bro. Like you, and, and guess what? Like you're back. Bring the Juice is a podcast that isn't necessarily a Fresno State podcast or a Valley podcast, but whether you like it or not, because I'm the host, 559 is going to be involved no matter I have a dude from freaking Antarctica on the national team for freaking, you know, doesn't soccer, matter. bobsled, and football. Like it doesn't matter. Like What is it? Skull? What's the thing? Skeleton, bro. Skeleton, Show sorry. some respect, bro. Yeah, but I just see a American Eagle right there. It looks pretty sick. Ice Cowboy, bro. It's my pastime. Ice Cowboy. Let's not talk about it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But seriously, Dylan, like, bro, like, you you come back to your city of Dinuba after winning the World Series. The day after the parade. And, and run you a baseball camp. run a baseball camp. Free baseball camp. I don't, I don't think you're getting enough exposure from these <laughs> news channels. Why, why, like, like, do you, people understand how hard it is to win a World Series? Do you people understand that when you're in, if you have a kid, and I know you're going to have kids someday because you're married, you, you put your kids in sports. And one of the first ones you usually put them in is either T-ball or U6 soccer or little hoopers or some bullshit like that. And guess what you do when you're a little kid? Because I know you were a little kid that played baseball. You dream big. You dream of, you don't dream of a Super Bowl. You don't even, but you don't even dream of winning the Super Bowl. You dream of, man, if I could play for the Dallas Cowboys, bro. If I could play for the San Francisco 49ers. I, in Little League, I played for the Braves more than anybody. Matter of fact, might have a TBS, might have a picture here and there. Now, Valley Sports. So, I, there you go. But I, you, you dream of playing in the bigs 
And I, I think you don't realize what the bigs are until you get to the bigs where it's there's single A, there's double A, there's triple A, there's all this shit. Then there's majors. Then you get caught up in the majors. Then you're on the roster. Then you get to the playoffs. Then I mean, I mean, I mean, Dylan, your first year you went all the way. And it's exclusive. And yet you're still out here supporting old Anuba, bro. You didn't go Hollywood. You said it before the pod. You live in, I'm not going to give your address, but you live in Tennessee. Yeah, but I'm here. You're I've here. probably been in my house for a total of like four months. You're out here. Yeah. You don't have to come out here. No. You don't have to. You're, you're, the people of California, they could come to you and they could probably have a good time. Good. But you're out here. You're in it. That shows something about your character, bro. And like, I, 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 there's nothing more I appreciate more than high character and integrity. And a dude from the valley, dude, it's just, it becomes a part of you, I feel like. Well, I think that word that you just said, integrity. Yeah. I like it because if you kind of shorten it out, you can spell it out on your paper. But Tell there's, me. There's gritty at the end. Integrity. And I had a shirt made my first camp that says integrity. And, and the like gritty is like emphasized. Jake, we're need to clip that. That's pretty yeah. good too. I appreciate that. Yeah, that's fucking lit. Spell it out. I know you know. I got. Right. I just wrote it down. Gritty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm good at math. No, but I like the gritty part, dude. I do too. And like, I, I'm a gritty dude, so I appreciate the shit of it. Dylan, let's talk about you know. All right, so last year we had the pod after the World Series. You had a great stories. We had a great night. Watched some Yellowstone. Talked about duck hunting. Had some ribeyes. It was cool. We're sipping our whiskey. We're sipping our cores. We're actually triple fisting right now, realistically. <laughs> Eating pistachios. Pistachios got me full right now because they have so much damn protein and they're so delicious, especially when they're from American pistachio growers. So where, you know what? You got called up and like the World Series pretty much happened. Your yeah. first it was like real a dream. PT it was, a dream. was in the World Series. Let's talk about that real quick. Let's recap. So... Let's talk World Series last year real quick. Because I want to get into this year. Because it's a different journey. Yes. Tell me about last year. Elevator pitch, go. Basically, I got released by the Marlins. Got picked up by the Braves. Was sitting on the couch for two weeks. I had a little bit of time off to kind of mentally reflect. Like, do I want to go through this grind? Because it's going to be a grind going with a new team. My team that had me for six years doesn't want me. So, I got to figure out. You got fired. You got fired. So I got fired, sat on the couch for two weeks, got called up by the Braves. They told me I was going to go to AA. I worked hard to get to AAA before they released the, the rosters. Right. Because there was only two guys that went up from the pitching standpoint. It was me and this other lefty. And we went up to AAA, and it was a tryout from the beginning because we went up there. It was still considered the alternate site. Had to work through some of that. I had to pitch like right away. You fly in, boom, pitch. And then you got to work. Like, you got to just keep working. I stayed in AAA the whole year. Uh, my grandma passed away. My friends were getting married. And I couldn't go to that because they were having COVID regulations. And they said, if I leave, Fucking I, COVID, couldn't come, I couldn't come back. <laughs> they were saying, because of the COVID regulations, um, I wasn't vaccinated at the time. And unfortunately, I had to get vac- vaccinated for... I'm not being, vaccinated. Being in the big so. leagues. No, I'm, I don't have my wife vaccinated. So Yeah. Uh, I just don't know. There's, For me, I wasn't going to end my journey just because of that. Right. Like there was a lot more. Like my grandpa was in the Navy, got shot up with probably these crazy stuff to be on a ship for whatever months. I said, I'm not going to let that stop me. So I let's, get go back to to, let's go to the end of the year. Let's finish this off. I explained to them that situation that's happened, as I explained to you guys, that right. things happened in my life and I didn't make a big fuss about it. Um, finished off the year because they gave me a chance. And like a week later, I don't know if it's because I said something. I don't know if they were planning it all along. But I ended up getting called up for the Diamondback series and a little bit of the San Diego series. For the Braves. For the Braves. Yeah. Uh, I didn't Atlanta. My, uh, yeah, but I didn't make that my debut then. I ended up going back to AAA, playing for about a week, throwing after not throwing for a while. Going back up when they called me once they clinched against the Mets. And Playoffs. No, no, no. This was the last two games of the series, and I literally walk in the locker room. I know some of the guys, and I was like, hey, guys, I'm here to just give you a little of relief in the bullpen. Sure. I'm here to just take take a little weight off the shoulders because that's what I knew my role was. Right. Uh, Own your fucking role. I know my role, and I'm saying I'm going to try to do it the best of my ability. 
I do a decent enough job to where they want me to be in the playoff roster. Absolutely. So I didn't pitch at all in the playoffs. The first round of the NLDS, the NLCS, I wasn't even on the roster. Shit. Uh, you know, got Was that hurt. a gut punch? No. Uh, they still wanted me to be with the team. Yeah. And for me, I'm saying this is like the best. Awesome. This awesome. Is the best seat in the house right yeah, here. Yeah. Front like row. I, yeah. So I ended up sitting there for, I think, a game or two. The guy gets hurt. I get put on the roster. And I think I pitched that night and I throw two innings. And I had a home run hit off me. But in my mind, I was like, I'm pitching <laughs> NLCS. I don't care what happens. I ended up getting out of the two innings. Uh, they put me on the World Series roster. The rest is like, I mean, don't pinch me because, you know what I mean, I'm still living in a dream. That's the way I see it. Right. And then you started one of the World Series games. They called me in the office, and I thought the same thing was going to happen with NLCS. Like, hey, we need your spot. Like, just say you're hurt. or like You're getting cut. On the, not, not essentially that. It was just like, hey, say like you're a little banged up, like your shoulder's hurt. We need this guy to pitch. Sure. I didn't know what was going on. They called me in, and they go, you're starting the game. I said, well, thank you for having the confidence in me. Shook everybody's hand, and I was like, I'm still, I'm on the team still. Let's do this. So I, it's nothing new to me. I try to just cancel out. That's the tunnel vision you're talking about that I have. Absolutely. I go out there early, don't care. I look at all these stuff, and I'm like, wow, people are going to be sitting all on this. Like, that's cool. But once you get called in the game, it's just tunnel vision. You Spin don't, the plate. You don't care about Not even that. My, head, my hat's usually low enough, and I, my brother calls it the dangle. But I'm just sitting there like, all right, it's just... I'm looking at your chest hair now, but that's just the chest hair. See the shit. That's the ground beef. See the the shit. ground beef. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's usually when I lock in. It's just me and the catcher. I don't. I don't care who's in the box. I don't care about the umpire. I don't care about the fans. It's just me and the catcher. And it's just even in the World Series, nothing else matters. God damn it! I love that shit, Dylan. Son of a bitch. God fucking damn it. So all right, so you win the World Series. Lit. Lit. How much does your ring weigh? Let's talk about that real quick. It's heavy. I mean, my brother has a high school one. I have a CO. I'm not trying to brag. I have a CO. Humble brag. One. Humble brag. Humble brag. I have a COS championship. Junior college. I have a Fresno State one. Mountain West. D1. And then I have Me a. Too. I have four. But yeah. Whatever. But uh, <laughs> then I have the World Series one. So I ended up talking to. How the fuck are you going to compare those, bro? It's just the weight difference. I'm saying. Oh, okay. Oh, you actually have weighed them on a scale? No, okay. I don't have a fish scale. <laughs> <laughs> fish scale. All right. <laughs> All right. So how much? So how big is it? It's uh, pretty close to this guy's mustache right here. It's a pretty, pretty big ring. Yeah. It's a fucking big ass ring. Okay, so it opens up too. It's got. It's pretty cool. How many times have you worn it? Like twice in my apartment. When. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, okay. So, what's the what is the appropriate event to wear a World Series ring? I mean, maybe like a Hall of Fame inductee. I don't know, like something crazy. For me, it's just like I don't like showing my stuff off. Like, no, I know, guy. I'm but not a bracelet guy. Maybe like a ten year reunion at Fresno State, or like a we have a ten year reunion coming up uh, for my high school because I graduated in twenty twelve. For sure, worth it at that point. Yeah, Will it fit though? Will it fit? What do you mean? It fits. You swell up sometimes, man. Older you get, your fingers get a little bigger. It, I I made it fit on my my ring finger because it's the same as my middle finger. Oh, okay, it'll be good. So then. it's like a size thirteen. Damn, I'm just trying to think. I mean, that's a big debate. So like, you can at put Fres it on a pinky ring if I get too swollen, dude. So I got fucking dudes. So I I won three rings at Fresno State, and it's just like it's not the World Series, and it's just like at what when do I wear them? Yeah, because I don't want to be a douche. Exactly. But at the I would same say time, it's a really nice event, and then it kind of asks it, it's a. But also, you, a question dude, of, you play you ultimately you play the game to win rings. Yeah. So if you got to wear them. Yeah. But and at the same time, time, how many times did Tom Brady wear his out? You think? Like, do you wear all of them? Like, there's for sure been a few events. I'm sure, but you don't wear all of them at the same time. You probably no, you wear to throw one recent. on, yeah. Recent, most memorable, yeah. like if your boy played at Boise and you beat Boise. Yeah, you show it off. You like, motherfucker. Nah, I don't care who wins today. Cause right? I got this. You know? I don't know. It's kind of a fun event, low key though. Okay, so this year, so that was the World Series year. Love the ring. Congratulations again. And you got married that year. A lot of rings that year. Yeah, that was a more important ring though. <laughs> Shout out to my wife. 
Make sure we clip that too. That was great. Make sure she listens to that. So this year, uh, you finished the World Series off with the Braves. We're on our high horse. Season doesn't start off with the Braves though necessarily. No, you get humbled, and this is what baseball is. is all Talk about to me about getting it. Humbled. Uh, people are all like, "Oh, you're gonna like." I get messages all the time, or you get texts or tuck calls like, "When are you playing? Like, when is this happening? When sure. is this happening?" And for me, my wife knows this too. Is that I don't, I don't assume stuff. Like, I don't assume oh, I'm gonna be on the roster. I don't assume that I'm anything's gonna happen. For me, I already told myself I'm at least gonna spend a month at AAA. At least you knew that. For me, mentally, I was saying preparing myself. I'm gonna spend at least a month at AAA. They got to figure things out, but I'm going to make it a hard decision. Like, I'm going to work so hard. I'm going to be the hey, best. Hey, we need this guy. Yeah. Like, I want to be so good that they're saying, let's try him. And I ended up getting called up well, against the Dodgers series. And I saw my parents, saw, like, my brother. It was, it was cool to see them. Right. But I ended up flying from, like, Jacksonville, Florida, all the way to L.A., they didn't throw it's me. It's a long ass flight, bro. Yeah, they, they it's like going to me. fucking Italy. <laughs> yeah. But then they they don't throw me, don't use me, and they send me back to to Jacksonville to throw. Within wait, like, wait, 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 time out. So they so you're in like Jacksonville. You're in Florida. Let's say you're in Florida. Well, I ended up driving too, like myself, because you can drive yourself. You don't have to go with the team. You drove from Florida to California. No, I, I drove from going at Atlanta Braves. Like yeah. that's the team. In Atlanta, I drove to Jacksonville. It was like a five-hour drive. Oh, that's not that bad. No, but I ended up driving myself, yeah. me and my wife, my dog, with my car. I fly out to L.A. My wife is like, well. What am I what? supposed to do? So she ends up driving back. <laughs> to Atlanta. To Atlanta. And then I don't pitch. I end up flying back to Jacksonville, pitching that game, riding home on the bus. And I'm like, wow, this is minor league as it gets right here. Like, that's minor Holy league. Holy shit, man. Okay, so then, so you're, so you get humbled real quick. You're in the minors for about a month, and then like <laughs> what was was there a, was there a were you hot? Did you get up or or how did it go? Are you talking about in AAA or in big league? The transition year two from you were in the minors to you get called up to the Braves. Are you talking about the first month that I was in AAA? Yes, yeah. So after that happened, I still was pitching well. Ended up having a pretty good ERA, like a two something. Uh, spent a fifteen innings, so good amount of time. Uh, I get called up. They needed a spot. Things happen. For the Atlanta Braves at this point, right? It's just things happen. It's like guy gets traded, guy gets released, DFA'd. They need a guy. I'm the guy. I'm the next in line. That's pretty much what happened. Next man up mentality. Yeah. What was – so, you know, your first year you won the World Series, which is fucking awesome, but you didn't really experience a long-term sentence necessarily in the majors versus this last year you got a pretty good chunk. Yeah. I mean, I I consider it like a full year, but it, I wouldn't say that I made the opening day roster and stuck it out and grinded out. A Does whole that time. matter? Yeah, really. For me, I, like for you, that's my next goal. Is like I want to make the starting roster. I want to make opening full one sixty two. I want to do a whole one sixty two. I want to grind it out from start to finish. Even if I get sent down, like it's still because there's times where I'm up in the big leagues. I'm not throwing for a little bit. Yeah, but I want to make the starting roster because it starts earlier than minor leagues. Like I want to be able to just say I'd play the whole one hundred sixty two from start to finish. What would you say, is there a difference in a full season of Major League fucking Atlanta Braves baseball versus bouncing around the minors, getting to the majors? Yeah. Intensity-wise? Yeah. I mean... Just stadium attendance-wise, I feel obviously. like you, when I said, like, blow your load, like, you're trying to blow your load every single day. Like, you want to give it all you got. You want to make sure that you have... Well, the fans are only going to see you. I've talked to Judge about this. Like, the fans are only going to Aaron? see you. The fans are Aaron? only going to see you for <laughs> maybe one game. Like, there, this might be the only game that they ever get to see you in real right. life. So, make your impression. First impressions are huge for me. Yeah, absolutely. So, I want to make sure that I'm doing the best of my ability and not hurting myself. Like, yeah. Because there's times where you're you have to put a regulator on. Like, I'm a little banged up, but yeah. I'm still going to go out there and. Handle business. You're gritty. Yeah. Get your piss hot. Well, you got to get your piss hot to stay gritty. Whoa. I haven't heard that one yet. I'm getting told, I'm getting podcasted on my own fucking podcast right now. Dylan, it fires me up. Honestly, I'm so happy that you have had your success. Um, between leaders and lures, we got sponsors here today. People that want to support. You're, it, it's just, it's so beneficial. And this is even on my show notes to where I want to make sure we discuss like, 
you know, last year, Bring the Juice was in a position where we started in August and I was trying to grow. I really just wanted to make a platform where athletes come on and say some real shit. Talk about the mindset it takes to compete at the highest level. I wanted to have high level athletes who had elite mindsets that were chasing greatness. And you're an absolute spitting image of that. You have the ring to win the World Series, but you also like your journey is it, it's inspiring. It really is. And I do believe when I I'm not gassing ABC 30 or KC 24, but I really do believe like there are athletes from like yourself from the Valley who like they don't get enough recognition from this man. Like I mean, I think they have. You're a human being, bro. Yeah, but they have like it, the jobs where they're looking at big stuff that happens, and it's not saying that it sports and that kind of stuff in the valley is not big no have, not like, at all accidents they have stuff that's going on in yeah, the valley that they, i don't even want to talk about but no they but, have more important things in the news to report other than a guy from the valley nah, that's playing baseball. see i'm gonna disagree with you real quick to say this but you're worth 10 minutes you're worth 10 minutes i appreciate that you came from danuba you won the fucking world series you for the fucking atlanta braves you're dealing your inspiration to kids around the world who want to play Major League Baseball. You started a goddamn charity when you didn't need to. 2020, I wasn't even a big leader. People were like, oh, you... Hey, and I'm going to tell you this too. And Dylan, you could call me out of pocket. Minor leaguers, their paycheck's dog shit. Yeah, My you're... first f- paycheck from the, I think, Batavia Muck Dogs, which is not a team anymore, was like 485 and that's two weeks, and I have to pay rent. 485 what? $485. For two weeks? For two weeks. I mean, bro, you could you could work at McDonald's and make fucking three times that. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying I'm saying like you 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 deserve ten minutes on these on these news channels. Like you, if you were just pitching for the Atlanta Braves, you deserve ten minutes. The fact that you started a World Series, won a World Series, went back to a World Series, which we haven't gotten into at all, and I don't want to get into it, but you've grown so much as a player, as a man, and you're a man in the valley who's under. I feel like you're underappreciated. And I needed to make sure that I had a platform here because Bring the Juice is not a direct Fresno State affiliate. It's not a direct Valley affiliate. It is a podcast that's for the boys, that's for athletes, that they could talk about their lives, their platform as human beings, as men, as women, as champions, as losers of championships. But it's some real shit, no matter what anyone's going to say. No one's going to listen to Bring the Juice and say, ah, they're talking some bullshit. Nah, bro. We're saying how it is. We're talking about how it is. It's unfiltered. We're sipping some weak-ass Pacific Flyway whiskey, but we like duck hunting. But Coors Light is good. The American pistachio growers are very present. We have about 40... We have some more sponsors, too, that you said you had to read off, but I don't know if you you named them all. (laughs) No, I named them all. But American pistachio growers... We have about 47 growers present right now. One is close enough to the studio to hear us. Love to hear it. Leaders and lures, we're going to hype up like a motherfucker. Dylan, before I wrap things up, do you have anything left you want to say to bring the Juice Nation? Because guess what? You're coming on in next year too. Listen in and you're going to hear some good quality stuff. Um, I think that you're going to hear real stuff. People aren't going to be afraid of being in a newscaster or like being real proper. Like I wasn't even able to turn. Like, I don't I felt know. like I was... I was in there. And You're in a straight jacket right now. You're in a straight jacket. Like, uh, I tased you. Yeah, like that's and you just feel more relaxed and comfortable. You're in somebody's house. You're in somebody's like garage or basement or. Dude, we're drinking booze. We're eating chips. We're eating pistachios. You just feel a looser, looser mindset. You're not so tense. I, 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 all I want is for people to feel like this is a conversation, not an interview. And all I want to feel is in my time as an athlete throughout. Bobsled, skeleton, Fresno State football, whatever, eighth grade volleyball, all that shit. People are human beings. At the end of the day, we're all human. We have real life stuff that goes on in our life. And um, at the end of the day, like, it doesn't matter if the score is 10 to nothing or zero to zero. Like, we tie the game because of whatever. Like, we still have real stuff that goes on in our lives. Human beings, whatever sport you play, Everyone's for the boys. Everyone just wants to have a good time. Everyone wants to be successful. Everyone's chasing greatness. They want what's best for their family. They want to, they want to do what's right. And I think, Dylan, you do a great job. And I appreciate you coming back on Bring the Juice. I can't wait to have you back again. We're going to tag Dylan. We're going to su- support the hell out of leaders and lords. we got sponsors in the back holder. Dylan, when does spring training start? February. What day? 
probably the 12th. It's usually Fuck. around it's it's around Valentine's Day. And my wife loves it, of course, because it's right when I'm working. Uh, oh, work. my God. Well, okay. I haven't announced it yet, but I'm going to announce it right now on this episode. We're having a Bring the Juice Golf Tournament, February 24th. All proceeds go towards Fresno State. Awesome. Um, I want to so- support the athletic program. I want people to get used to donating towards the athletic program because I do think we deserve to be in the Pac-12, Big 12, maybe the SEC. I don't know. Something hot, though. Is that mainly like just from funding, and that's what brings you in a different division, or how does that work? I don't even know. I am a 100% a guy who I love the dogs. I played for the dogs. My brother played for the dogs. I think my youngest brother is going to play for the dogs. And I think we have a competitive sports team in football, baseball, softball is always in there, tennis is always in there. I hope basketball is competitive in there. I think we're at the top of the Mountain West, 100%. Nobody could go against that. We have too many legends in professional sports like yourself that are in it to the point where with all these crazy conference realignments, we need to be in the mix. And if funding is not going to happen, because I don't have any money, Dylan. I have zero money. I have zero fucking money. But I know dudes like yourself who will say, go dogs. 100%. Because it, it, it was a part of your journey. It was. You support the bulldog, dogs. But what is it? Bulldog born, bulldog Bulldog born and bulldog bred. Going to be a bulldog to the damn dead. And I'm not saying, hey, Dylan Lee, can you send me $100,000? I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying, hey, can the person that goes to what, that what's went to watch Dylan Lee pitch for the fucking Fresno State Bulldogs, for the guy who went and saw Marcus McMurray and your fellow Dinubian throw touchdowns for the State Bulldogs, can they donate $10 a month? A hundred dollars a year, yeah, whatever it is, because I don't. We don't need people to donate fifty thousand dollars at a time. If a thousand people donate a hundred dollars, but that's a hundred thousand yeah. dollars. That's gonna do something. Yeah. So with bring the juice, I'm trying to support the dogs. I'm trying to make a stand for the cause. I haven't announced it yet at all. So I'm the first to hear about it. No, I'm not the first, but I'm the first. Podcast You're the first. You're the first. You're the first. You're the first. It's the first yeah. video that's ever gone viral about it. I'm here to support the dogs, and I wish you were there, but I want to have formal dogs at this tournament. I want to have them supporting. I want people to be able to meet them, all that shit. Do a FaceTime video or something. Do a FaceTime I mean? video. Yeah. Maybe we raffle off a jersey. I don't fucking know. Maybe we raffle off like a just signed baseball. Yeah. Signed hat, you know. Sign hat. Sign bring the juice hat. I don't know. Point is, I want, I'm here to support the dogs, um, and I know I'll get your support. And Dylan, I appreciate you coming on Bring the Juice. I appreciate how gritty you are. Keep your nose on the grindstone. Keep fucking grinding. Go Braves. Go Dogs. Shout out to the 559. Shout out to that Nibba. Let's get after it. Yeah. Keep your fucking piss hot. Follow Dylan Lee. Get leaders and lords on your investment list for donations. End of the years. About End of the time. years. Sign off. Get those write-offs. Get your piss hot. We'll see you next week on Bring the Juice.